Welcome to another edition of Film Nut. I am your host, Jeff Schubert. Glad you can join us. Well, we have got a boatload of questions to get to tonight, so we're going to get right to it. We are ready to rock. My guest tonight, as, is, as it is often said, is best known for her role on the hit show Xena Warrior Princess. True enough, but more than that, in portraying Gabrielle, Renee O'Connor created one of the more transcendent characters I've ever seen on television, inspiring viewers around the world long after the show's last original air date. On her last appearance on Film Nut, we talked about her production company's debut feature, the hilarious comedy Diamonds and Guns, in which she co-produces, co-directs, and stars in. Among other projects since then, O'Connor has appeared on the Sci-Fi Channel's Monsters Arc. She will be starring in the upcoming web series Arc, no relation between the two, but we'll be spending a good amount of time tonight on her first, or on her just completed short film, Words Unspoken, in which she writes, directs, and stars. And of course, lots of your viewer questions. So to all of you out there, in your hearts and your minds, please join me in enthusiastically welcoming back to the program, Renee O'Connor. Hey! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Thanks for having me back. First guest in the new Film Nut studio. I know. It's a great space. It's huge. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for coming back. I know. It's a pleasure. Hi, guys. <laughs> Girls. Everyone around the world. Everyone. Thanks for staying up. Yeah, they're doing that. <laughs> Believe me, they are. Said. Thank you. Yeah, so actually a few things. We have so many questions that came in for you, and a lot of them said a little bit of the same thing, so I'm just going to say it once, you guys, so I don't have to repeat it with every IM, so we can hopefully get to more IMs. And that is, number one, very happy belated birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so sweet, you know, <laughs> so sweet. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. I had a great birthday, too. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Different kind of show I'd ask you about it, but I want to get to the filmmaking stuff. Okay, <laughs> True. <laughs> Let's see. But, but, and, they, and they all send you their love, and they mm -hmm. all you know, talk about how inspiring you are and how they wish you all the success Thank you know, you. in the world. Back at you. Good deals. So with that, I want to talk about this uh, mantra that you have on your website, or a mission statement. And it mm -hmm. says, my intent is to make films that will fire up your consciousness. How should or how will Words Unspoken do that? Well. It, hopefully it will. Um, I, I, my intent is to, with Words and Spoken is to capture people's emotion and put them in their heart and um, to feel deep levels of compassion for these people because it's about domestic violence. So I tried to show the, uh, the different points of view from the father and the son's point of view. And hopefully people can experience something that's maybe beyond their reality or if it is a part of their environment now or has been to actually feel something, speak, express yourself and move beyond it, you know, find forgiveness. There's a lot of themes in this little short film, but Wonderful. about feelings. Yeah, and yeah. I think there were four really heady things that it made you think about that mm -hmm. we'll get to in a minute, but I want to get right to that I am board because I alluded to a whole bunch of them. So let's see what we have here. My question has to deal with your work on the film Words Unspoken. What inspired you to direct this film? Does it have any special meaning to you? Sincerely, Amanda. Uh, what inspired me to direct this film? I think because I found it originally from a newspaper article that um, I wanted to direct something where I didn't have to compromise to a, a studio such as a television show. And, um, and I could really just be authentic in my own voice and in my own visions. So I wanted to direct it. And even back when I was working on Xena and I found this article about this man, um, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to direct this. Well, you know, yeah. you're very passionate. Mm -hmm. and. It must have taken a lot of passion because you've held on to this particular story for so long. <laughs> I, I think it's a great thing, and, and you wanted to write it and you wanted to direct it, and so and just Actually, now. It's I never really thought I would write it. I just knew that it was a story about a man who did go to jail because he took his father on one last joyride, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what I could tell that wouldn't be like weekend at Bernie's. You know, right. <laughs> so I kept magic. Right. Okay, the father's on the spike. You know, what can you do? And I didn't want it to be a comedy, right. and, and I just kept playing with it. Yeah, and, definitely and not as many laughs as Diamonds and Guns. <laughs> not, no, 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 no. And it could have gone that way, believe me. But, um, but no, I just kept trying to think of the heart. Where's the heart? This man literally went to jail, in reality, for taking his father on this, this joy ride as he passed away. And I just thought that was so moving. 
And so that's what I kept coming back to. How can I tell this story? It turns out I did write it, which is beyond you know my true ambition, but but I did. Well, what's interesting, <laughs> sitting here and hearing you say that, is, is I reflect back on our interview last time, and that's how you talked about your you know your acting, how it's from the heart, and mm -hmm. your character Gabrielle was all about the heart. Very much. About and now that. here you are, drawn so drawn to a piece yeah. because of the heart of it. But I think that's true for anything that I do now. I really want to connect with. Um, people who are so free in their love or completely trapped in not feeling any love. I want to look at these different character pieces and again put it out there so that other people can get something from it and you know find more about themselves. And I love how you say and just put it out there because I felt like with all these things that Words and Spoken makes you think about you kind of put it out there without judgment. You know, it's, it's about starting a debate, yeah. getting people to think and feel and, and explore their feelings and their thoughts on these issues. Yeah, well, I remember, I can't remember who, where I got this, but it was a quote about, um, about leaving it open for interpretation. And I love that type of filmmaking Me because too. everybody brings what they want to a story, whether you're receiving it or telling it. And if you keep it open, then anybody can feel anything and they can hear what they want to hear. So that's exactly what I want to do with this. I, I, think sure. that, I think it's great and I think that people are ready for it because so much of what we get today is almost kind of pushed down our throat with a judgment, with an agenda, with an opinion yeah. that certain people close off to it before they even walk in the door because of that, whereas the way your approach is, is very inviting. Well, I was hoping so, but it's funny because I, I'm, you know, I don't have too much experience in all of this really, and I, this is only my third time directing, but, um, but I always knew that's what I wanted to do and there were a couple times that I, wondered if I was right, you know. Um, once was with the sound. Uh, I was working with a sound mixer and I was trying to decide when to put the music in and he said to me, he said, Renee, you've come this far not putting an emotion on it so that people had to feel a certain way. Don't let it go now, you know. And I was like, you're right, you're right, you know, you, know, you have to kind of pick yourself back up and say this is what I want. So it's, it's just all about checking back in with yourself yeah. and b being um, trusting with your own intuition. And trusting, you know? the, and trusting the people that, that are part of your team. Exactly. You know, to keep you on track. That's huge, yeah. actually. Yeah. Gabs fan, greetings from New Jersey and talking Xena. While working on Words Unspoken, your second production, but your first production from writing to can we scroll down a little bit? There we go. Uh, to post-production, was there something that was harder to accomplish than you expected? Anything easier than you expected? Um, hello, Gabs fan. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> um, first of all, it's easier. Um, it was actually easier directing and acting this time than it was when I did it on Xena. Okay, because yeah, you talked about that was yeah. tough and now one episode you were in it, but the second one you I weren't wasn't. in it a lot because you wanted it to focus on the directing. Right. So this was easier. This was easier, but I gave myself the ability to do all my acting things beforehand, so I was completely prepared coming in. So you were locked and loaded as an actress. I was. Okay. I knew, you know, I knew everything I needed to know about the character, which helps that I could fill it in, in the gaps, so to speak. But um, and then that was easier. And I also, as an actress and director, blah blah blah, I tried to give myself as many different um, versions of how to play the scene. There were some versions where I was much more emotional. There were versions where I was more aggressive or more timid because I didn't know how I wanted it all to fit in the end. So I tried to do all that and then later play with it. Well, and then you had, you know, you have a, a great cast. Now, Jed, you've worked with before. He was yes. from Diamonds and Guns. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, uh, making his screen debut <laughs> would be your son, right, Miles? Miles, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> now, working with someone who you've worked with before who you know is that harder or easier sometimes it's easier to tell a stranger hey do it again or that wasn't what I wanted than it is someone you're close to so is that challenging directing someone you you know you were yeah, familiar with no I don't think so actually I, I you like ripped you them said, up whenever I, you wanted to well I, yeah <laughs> no I built in like you said the uh, the team that um, was incredibly supportive that resonated with the material and that were very good actors I mean Jed was great Randy Timby the lady who played the nurse all of these actors and actresses are so professional and they did all their homework they knew so much more than I could have ever brought to it and tried to create and so that's what you do you and know? for you diamonds and gun yeah. fans very different role for Jed right? it was a very different role <laughs> yeah. for Jed yeah but it was wonderful because he took this character and he uh, literally he did his homework yeah. we did improvisations together as brother and sister, it's right. funny, and right. you know, <laughs> yeah. and then um, he also created monologues that he would go and do and be in his 
convict uniform. So he did, you know, that's pretty good. Although, uh, right, when he was in prison, sorry to say, Jed, you're going to be looking like me in a few years, but uh. <laughs> you, look, you look good. <laughs> well, just, you know, with the... Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was funny when we were there, because he had all of his hair up until the last day, of course, and um, he started shaving it, and I guess no one in the crew knew that he was going to do that. So everyone was just gobsmacked that he would commit this much to the film, you know. Wonderful, yeah. But, I mean, in our world, that's part of a role. If you say yes. you're going to do a role, you don't hesitate anywhere, you know. Right. So we just thought that was very funny. Yeah, but, you know, you don't always take it for granted. I was telling you before we came on when I interviewed Adrian Wilkinson, uh -huh. uh, she said, I think it was off camera, I don't think she said it during the actual interview, but she was talking about she appreciated you, how working with you in scenes, how you would... A lot of times actors are talking to no one. They're talking to space or they're talking to just off an inch of the camera and the actor they're working with is yeah. in their trailer or something. But you would always stay in there. You would always feed her her lines even when the coverage was on her. See, that is the most ridiculous story that someone would be in the trailer, you know? Yeah. That is so crazy. That makes me laugh. I, don't, I can't imagine that. But anyway, um, thank you, Adrian. Wow. And that should just be standard. I mean, come on. Because you have to be there with each other to have a real relationship and the camera happens to be capturing it, that's it. But how do you have a relationship with a piece of paper or a dot, you know? It, I mean, you're I guess you're so right, it should be standard, yeah. but it's not, and if you're a filmmaker yeah. watching this, you know, encourage your actors, you know, to do that, because it's a great benefit to them. Or, for instance, here you go, um, my son Miles, because he was in it, there was a, a part where he's playing with a, a little toy game, you know, like a PlayStation, uh -huh. and of course there was nothing there, but I was on the other side, and I was pretending to reenact a Star Wars episode that he loves, right. just so he would be captivated right. and sort of entertained. So, you know, he could have done that, I guess, but it wouldn't be the same as opposed to having someone there interacting with him. Yeah. You know, it's just more human, I think. Absolutely. You know? So let's see, we have something from Ripley Scott. Would you want to develop this into a feature-length film? If so, is that something you're actively uh, pursuing. Hi, Ripley Scott. By the way, hang in there. We're all thinking about you. And um, I know I never intended this to be a feature film. It was a short, and my objective was to try to capture as much of the story as I could in a short and tell it in a concise manner. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because the, the way you shot it, I mean, it can very easily be seen. It could be. That's you what, yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? I think we're getting some questions. People want to know what's on your wrist. Oh, really? Yeah. This was a birthday present from um, my dear friend and my neighbor, actually the lady from Israel, who I was, I once shared with you guys um, my trip to Israel and her talks on politics and religion. She gave this to me uh, for my birthday because I have a big heart, she said. <laughs> so that was so sweet. That was very nice. <laughs> uh, shooty Girl would like to ask, uh, Words Unspoken was a very emotional topic. Did you find it difficult to say everything you wanted to say given you were filming it as a short film? Was there anything you wanted to put in there uh, but you couldn't for one reason or another? No, because it's called Words Unspoken. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, something has to be out there for you to interpret. <laughs> Absolutely. So like some of the topics I was talking about where I thought, and did you give enough? Yeah, I think you, you pretty much describe what it's about. It's a guy who? It's um, about a man who takes his father on one last joy ride because he's seeking re forgiveness. His father was abusive to him as a child, and so he's trying to release this and let him go and actually share a moment of love between the two of them before his father is really gone. Yeah. And, and Shooter Girl wanted to say also that it is her favorite piece of work of yours to date. Well, why would that be? Shut a girl? Shoot a girl? <laughs> I never even meant to ask you. How do you actually say that? Is it shut a girl? Oh, that's right. I'm not sure. I'm but asking it to you. Shoot us back an answer to that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> why would that be your favorite? And, um, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, so some of the topics I came away with thinking about, you tell me if this is fair or not. Um, thoughts pro or con on euthanasia. Mm -hmm. It made me think of that. That was, that was a big one, absolutely. Um, like, basically, who has a right to say how they would like to die? You know, it should be the father's choice, but we have so many politics and rules around what's appropriate, so that's something that was addressed. It's interesting, um, when I was younger, I was studying in college, that countries that actually have euthanasia, the life expectancy is better because people are secure and comfortable in the knowledge of how they're going to go. Wow, the you know? peace is already yeah, there. Yeah, the peace, right, wow. exactly. So then another uh, bit was then, you know, what would a parent do for a child? What would a parent do or, for a child? Oh, no, I'm sorry. What should a parent ask of a child? Well, that's a big one. Yeah. And I know because this, again, could be from another point of view that the father is continuing this abuse by asking the son to help him, you know, help assist him in his death. Um, and that was what was brought up by a lady recently. 
And again, if, like with this woman, if this is part of her life and she needs to address it and she's feeling violated, by all means, take it, you know, embrace this and go for it. Have a conversation about it. That's what this filmmaking is all yeah, about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fire people up. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, the words unspoken kind of speaks for itself, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when do you tell people, how long do you let silence go between people that you care about? And right. What, when do you say what you want to say to someone? Isn't that sad? That, to me, just, just breaks my heart when people can't really say what, how they really feel every moment of every day, you know? <laughs> It'd be a different world. I don't know how easy that would be, but, yeah, you no, know, you, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, no, you, you actually had a, a little rant about that the last time you were here. Did I really? <laughs> yes, you did. There you, you go. You, you were talking about this, um, <laughs> te this teacher and this project that you brought in of Miles, and the teacher was crying, and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and how wow. she should be okay with that. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. A little bit 32 would like to ask, it is nice to see that someone is doing a short film on these intense issues. I am an overcomer of severe abuse neglect myself. Your work can bring a lot of healing and wholeness to people. Your heart is very compassionate and insightful. When I write, I take on the emotional and mental identities of the characters to tell the story. Do you do that as well? Would it be okay to use your name in my book as someone who inspired me in my own journey of mm. healing and redemption? Yes, thank you so much for asking. You absolutely use my name, and I'm glad you're inspired. That's Lydia. You can say hello Lydia, to Lydia. Lydia, please, thank you. Um, and keep going, keep writing. Um, what was her question? Lydia, what was your question? Again, uh, about, it was about uh, when she does the writing. When she does the writing. She, she gets into the from, mental and the emotional of the character. All the different characters. Do you do that as well? Um, since this was my first piece writing, I did. I really tried to look at each person's, each character's perspective. And, uh, and dig deeper, you know, what is their motivation? How trapped are they in this situation? Because that was one of the themes I wanted to look at. How free and how trapped are each of the three characters? Because it's ironic, this man is going to jail where he's physically trapped, but he's the most emotionally free in his life. And I wanted to take this theme and pull it through on each of the characters, so. Um, yes, I did. I happened to do that for this one. That's a wonderful paradox. You know, Isn't in, it? in prison, but yet the most yeah. free, right? And whereas his sister, the character I played, was completely trapped and shut down and more frustrated than ever that, that you know, he took away this opportunity for her, to, that she's been waiting to have a connection, a deep connection with her father, waiting all her life for this, and it never happened, and now it's gone. Yeah. So. Question that, that come up from a couple of different viewers. Um, <laughs> because you are passionate and drawn to matters of the heart or whatever. Do you ever think about doing a documentary, either about yourself or about any particular issue cause as documentary? Um, not at the moment. Nothing has come up for me yet oh. about myself. Maybe other people, but nothing is, is really concrete. Right. So now, with acting and the process of filmmaking, you have such respect for it. So I'm assuming that's the same with writing. How did you prepare for writing? Who, were your, who was your inspiration? Was it writers in particular? Was it books? You know, I have such a respect for writing that it, uh, it's one of the few things that I feel intimidates me because I don't know how they do it. I really do not know how they can sit down and write a script in, say, three or four days, you know, or a novel in, in a couple months. And it's just, it's, it's the humility that I feel over that is pretty amazing. So I had to overcome those, those sort of fears and just go at it with um, an actor's point of view where I would look at one character and then I would improvise a scene knowing the, the outline of what I was trying to get across, and then I would go back and write the material that I found. That's I didn't interesting. know how to do it, yeah. That's you know. great. I so really I dig know. that. <laughs> That's very, I really like well, that. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's the right way, or, but it's, well, it, it worked it, for this. It worked for this, yeah. right? I mean, you, you went to your strength, right? Exactly. You know, And you mm -hmm. did it kind of almost in a, I don't want to say backwards way because it worked for you that was your way. It was way. completely backwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just didn't want to say it. I know, that's okay. You know, you know? You know? <laughs> as long as the end piece is uh, concise again, you know? Yeah, that it yeah. actually, I, I was worried about being able to tell the story with th in three different generations. Mm -hmm. Right. Three different timelines. Um, so I had to keep checking in with people to make sure that they could follow the story as I was editing. Well, speaking of timelines, speaking of editing, you do go back and forth between past and present. Mm -hmm. uh, was that intentional from the outset? Did you discover it in the editing process? It was always intentional. I had <laughs> some really good friends that tried to talk me out of it because it's, it appeared to be confusing on the paper. But, um, and so I tried to write a linear story where we went through the whole thing. and. In the end, it, it wasn't my own voice. I really wanted to have a stream of consciousness feel of, of what these people were going through, you know. 
Yeah, and I, when you guys out there, when you do get a chance to watch it, remember this. An interesting edit choice you made in a few places is you, you had the camera on the listener more so than the speaker in certain instances uh -huh. to get the emotional impact of what was being said. And right. I thought those were really strong and, and good editing choices that you were the editor made. Well, Brooke Anderson, who's, uh, gosh, talk about a great team player, very creative. Um, it was her, I think, one of her first times editing. So I, we checked in with each other the whole time, you know, and it, it, again, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was her idea or my idea or just working and massaging it through. Sure. But, um, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Anna would like to ask, do you have any tips for others who want to express their experiences in a similar creative way um, to words unspoken? Uh, similar tips on... on, um, on tips on others who want to express their experiences, um, so oh, maybe yeah. childhood experiences. Yeah, or, I mean, obviously, if you're a writer, write. If you're a dancer, get out and make an interpretive dance movement. Or if you're a painter, paint something. It's about finding how you want to best express yourself. You well, and, and I think what you said and how you wrote it is, is a great tip, is something that for people without maybe the experience of writing, whatever, right. get with a group of friends, improv it, bra sure. brainstorm, free associate, don't judge, just, just get it out there, have the tape recorder on the camera, see what comes out, and yeah. work with it from there, right? It's, that's true, and it's funny because I have this wonderful acting coach, her name's Julie Ariola, and um, I keep going back to her to workshop roles that I have. And at the time, I happened to be in this little tiny class that she had just started for writing and performing. And this is where I started really concentrating on the short film. And so I would literally get up with other actors, mostly actresses, playing guys. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, she'd play my father, right. she'd play my brother. Right. And, and just tried to feel what the uh, story was. And I think that was such a great gift, for sure, you know, to find a, find a, a team where you can play and make it work. Absolutely. It's funny. Yeah. Let's see, we want to say hello to some live viewers. So let's see, want to, Renee, give a shout out to Scroll Girl, uh, Danny Doze, Panda 2, and Demolition. And you can cheat if you want to look over there. Sure. Where are they? Oh, hey, Scroll Girl. Danny Doze, is that right? Danny Doze? Panda 2. Where's Panda 1? Hey. And Demolition. What is that? <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> What's up with that? Well, we're waiting for a shooty girl response, then demolition, we'll get back to you. Xena uh, WP77 would like to say, hi Renee, my question is regarding words unspoken. You said in the Coffee uh, Talk 6 that you had a, a difficult childhood and this movie seems to reflect on that, on the father figure. Is there any reference of your own life in this movie specifically? And then she also says, I heard that Miles was there too. Why did you choose to use your son to act that role of young Charles? Um, well, I'll start with Miles first. I did meet with a, an, a little boy, about a little older than Miles, to play the part. And I, I couldn't quite get him out of his head. You, know, you talk about filters as an actor. How do you sort of filter yourself away from the material? And I tried working with him and talking to him, and I just couldn't get him back into his heart to really feel what this could be like. And with Miles, he's such an expressive little boy that um, he was he was perfect, you know, and he was willing, which was most important for me, that he was absolutely willing to do it because it's not easy material. And um, now was he a diva so, yeah. on set? Did he, how was is he, he a diva? <laughs> he is a <laughs> was he in his trailer while other actors were working? Or, yeah. yeah, he is a he's a prank. He just loves to he loves to socialize. So it's actually quite funny because he had such a great time. You know, um, he would go to the craft service table where there's just all this food, just junk food and sodas, and he was, you know, bopping around, and everyone treated him with such respect and love all the time. And um, he had a ball, you know. I actually had to kind of focus him in a couple times to, <laughs> it's like, okay, Miles, you know, right. let's just quiet down and, you know. Yeah. Did he read the script yeah. and say like, "Mom, no yeah, fart right. jokes. I'm not going to do it." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Huh? That was the ode of diamonds and guns. Right. right <laughs> like exactly. Still. Like, oh my gosh. He loves the what fart was jokes, I thinking? right? Yeah. <laughs> he still loves his fart jokes. Yeah. Now, in a more serious note, was it challenging for you technically, emotionally, directing him? He's in this very, you know, intense yeah. scene with, you know, that's about abuse, and, yeah. and, and he's the recipient of it. How, how was that for you, standing off camera, watching him, directing him at that moment? It's funny. Well, there were different parts that, to me, were, uh, it was really difficult, you know, because, for instance, in the kitchen scene, he's probably his most vulnerable, and what's funny is off camera, we weren't even doing the scene. 
we weren't doing the material. We were talking about other things, and it wasn't me, it was also the other actor. But, but just to, to have him so um, vulnerable, you know, it, that's hard as a mom, you know. But, um, but Miles, he's, he's just this tremendous spirit, you know. And um, for the other part where it's actually supposed to be abuse, you know, it <laughs> it was an abuse. That's what's funny is right. that um, Miles is uh, he could yell cut when he wanted to yell cut, which right. is kind of funny mm -hmm. because at one point I said, okay, we're going to get this one piece, and when you're uncomfortable, we'll, we're done. So it's like action and cut. You know? right. <laughs> like, Miles, let me just get him to walk in the room. You know, right. and that's what it was about. It was about piecing it up uh, and making it work in the editing room later. You know, and again, I don't know that I really can sell it because it was hard to, to sell something that's really not there, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, but I tried, that's for sure. Well, and you had experience on the <clears throat> acting end in one week and a month where you're working with a kid and there's yes. language. That was the issue with that one. And I was very aware of that, yeah. I, we tried to, um, as Randy's walking out of the kitchen scene, you know, he says something to, which to me was the worst uh -huh. language. So I had him say it under his breath, and I had him saying as he's walking away from them. You know what I mean? And so there were ways, and then later on we lifted the sound up in the post. I was so you know? all over that, because people, yeah. <laughs> people don't know. One Weekend is a Month is a short film that you did, and you're, a, you're an Iraqi vet that's being called back to, yeah. you know, to war. Yes. And there was a lot of language, but the kid was never in the room for the language. Right. So in this, I noticed the language was under his breath, so I'm like, I'm, you did. I, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm betting Miles was close by, and that's why. And the water was yeah. running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaving, yeah. So, <laughs> Miles had so much fun. I mean, he was splashing waters, pretending to wash dishes. I mean, you know, these Just things. like he does when it's oh, off camera. Yeah, right? you know. <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, let's get to another instant message. Uh, let's see, the next one is from BCN Gal. After you are done touring the festivals, do you have any plans for releasing words unspoken to a broader audience via DVD, internet, international film festivals? Um, there are some important ones here in Spain. <laughs> Wink. So let's talk about the festival process. Is that where you're at? You just finished editing it like very recently, right? We did. We finished um, literally January. What was it? When were you guys all here? Yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> yeah. In so, January. Yeah, oh, the, at the right. A few at the days convention. before right. a Xena convention. Right. Because I wanted to show it to them first, so I tried to make that my S deadline. So what's the plan now? Is it you're uh, going to apply to festivals? Applying what? to festivals. You know, I I don't know. It's with any film. I think you don't know how it's going to stand outside of our comfort zone. Right. <laughs> until you put it out there. So I'm I'm just open to see what happens. I have no idea. Right. So festivals, and then yeah. possible um, when it's done with the festival, when will the fans get a chance to see it? Will they? Get to see it. Yeah, yeah. We want that copy. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. Uh, I want everyone to have a chance to see it because that's what this is about. Is this film is, you know, sharing it. But I have to wait till the festivals do have an opportunity to screen sure. them, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to submit them to different areas around the country so that people will have an opportunity, hopefully, to see. Oh, great! Them so you'll let people theater. know on websites Absolutely. and so forth. So yeah. in their, when it gets to their yeah. city in a festival, they can come check it out. Absolutely. So fingers crossed that it comes to one near you. you know? Absolutely. Because <laughs> it'd be great, you know. Yeah, I think it'd be great. definitely. Let's see, we have one here that says, I wish you all the best in your upcoming projects. Oh, did I just read that? Kisses from Spain? Kisses from Spain. That's Laura. No, maybe that's different. Oh, okay. So let's get to another one. Charismatic, I would like to hear Renee's view of indie versus major motion pictures, art versus celebrity, and what's the state of Hollywood these days in all the hype and BS with no room for real artistry? Is it better to stay <laughs> an indie? Let's keep that one up because I think I'm going to have to reference it a couple times because there's a lot of information there. So currently we're in some harsh economic times. Uh, what's your current state on Hollywood and being an indie filmmaker? Is it tough right now to raise money for indie projects? Or You know, I, I, I really don't have any frame of reference to tell you the <laughs> truth. You know, I mean, this is the next step for me is to get real funding for pro larger projects. So I'll be out there with everybody else and, and finding my way through. And what's great is I don't feel pessimistic about it, you know. I don't feel negative. Ask me in a couple of years. <laughs> but, um, because... Renee, and the last time you were on <laughs> yeah, film, right? You, you, know? so you were so <laughs> gung-ho. You know, no limitations. No limitations. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, part of my next journey is putting myself out there with production companies and pitching material. So we'll, we will find out what it's really like. I don't know. So then how about art versus celebrity? What do you, what comes to I mind? I don't really understand what that means. What is that question? Art versus think? celebrity is, um, 
think of reality star versus serious actor. I think is where this person's going with this. You know, the pop culture fame, how people, oh, okay. have, you know, the reality TV. Um, right, People right. are famous for being famous. I, I'm guessing, I don't mean to put words in the IMO's yeah, mouth. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, but that's kind of what, versus like, you know, a true artist, which I certainly put you in that category. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, um, you know, I don't even know how to answer that one. I just think that if you're uh, going for fame and celebrity, then you know, you might be disappointed somewhere along the, the way because I can't imagine that'd be very fulfilling. Yeah. You know, but if you're um, if you want to do some sort of expression creatively, then it can be anything. It doesn't have to be film. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be seen. Even you can do it at home, and you know, if you don't want to share it, fine. Just do it. You know. Well, and also, I mean, here you are. You're very successful. You've done a lot, and yet you're still in acting classes all the time yeah. because it's about your craft. And, and you experiment, and you do monologues, and you dance, and you do all kinds of things, <laughs> and you paint just to feed, the, you know, your artistic nature. Right. That's being an artist. <clears throat> right. You so know. it's funny if I don't have a project <laughs> for the acting uh -huh. so much that I find I want to paint. I just can't get by without some sort of emotional expression because it, I. I use the painting in that way. Now, since we're on the subject of painting, it came up randomly. Someone asked an IM. I'm not sure who it is. I'll, I'll credit you later if I see it. But someone wanted to know um, who, who inspires you to paint or who are your painting? Do you have any painters yeah, who's working? Yeah, I do love Vincent van Gogh. Do you see Gogh or go? <laughs> um, I love him because you can just look at his paintings and you, um, you can just tell that it took a long time, first of all, to, to make them. And then there's so much emotion in them as well. Um, I think I'd love to watch him, but I might go a little crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Wolfwing that asked you that question or wanted to know that information. So, Thanks, uh, Wolfwing. And let's Wolf -winged. see. Wolfwing. Now, since I mentioned it, I don't want to get too far away from it. You love to dance. You love your sexy clothes, right? I know what is that <laughs> all about. And, you and, guys are fixated on my expressing myself, sec my sexuality, right? And, That's and, what. Right, and your whips, right? You know, so, I talk with Lucy Lawless a couple times, and, and, and I again, swear, girl talk comes out and it stays forever. It stays forever. Oh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> no, 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 no. Ever a character based on that? You know, well, possibly, possibly. I um, I have been toying with something for about a year. Okay. And it is, it's a dark comedy, and it, it does involve sexuality, and it's 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 all about. Um, uh, situations that are inappropriate, you okay. know. But I don't know what I'll do with it, so I just have to keep playing. Something you know? to play with, something to workshop something with to your workshop. acting Something to workshop, yeah. yeah. Very cool. SND would like to ask, some people when they write already have everything in their minds. They know the intro, the climax, right. Right. Um, till, the, uh, till the ending. When you, Renee, are writing a story, how, does, how often do you stop writing and leave the ending or whichever part for another day? Wow. Um, well, you guess, kind of already answered that. Yeah, because, with words and spoken. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it was, it was, I was constantly working on it up until we were shooting. There's a point where uh, he, the, fa the father is released down the river by the son. And I did not know that it was going to be in the story until I was doing my location scout. And it's such a pivotal moment. But while I was there, I suddenly realized that uh, he needed that release physically in, in the story. So I, I don't know. That's, that was a... Uh, Luck? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Serendipity, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so ARC is this web series that you're involved in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, quick setup. Uh, what is ARC about? ARC is about, um, so far, right. <laughs> it's about a woman who wakes up um, in a spaceship and she's trying to figure out her way home. She's left her son in, on Earth, so she needs to get back to him. Um, but I think there's much more there, and I, I don't I know all of it. I'm not privy to all the information and the different details that they're, they're still creating. And there are some great people involved in it, right? You have the writing producing team of the new 90210 mm -hmm. series, right? Gabe Sachs and Jeff Judah, yeah. Great. And you have, yeah. And you have uh, Trey Stokes. Of, Trey Stokes. Of, 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 hey, Trey. Of, of uh, Pink <laughs> Five fame, right? Yeah. <laughs> Trey's wonderful. Boy, talk about um, being very creative and hardworking. Unbelievable. Well, we have an I am about him, I believe. Uh, Stut788 would like to ask. Trey Stokes of ARC, the series, mentioned in an interview that he was surprised that a name, his word, such as yourself, would be interested in such a small project, and he actually tried to talk you out of joining the project. <laughs> Um, there's a second half. Well, let's just start with that one. He that tried to talk you out of laugh. it. That's just so, something Trey would say. <laughs> um, he did, it didn't seem that way when I met him. You know, he he was just uh, talking about the project, and I started asking a lot of questions, and I wanted to read the script, and 
And uh, Trey is just so, he's so quirky and creative and um, so, crea I mean, so creative. It's unbelievable. So I, I was immediately intrigued by um, what he could do with this. And this is before I knew anything about Pink 5, so. So well, then watch what he could do was even better. You know? Well, from what I've seen so far and from what I understand is, you know, not a huge budget on this, but it, it looks great. Doesn't and, it look good? And I know he has a, a strong visual effects background. Mm -hmm. I can see it. It, it doesn't play like a, a web series at all. And he does or the team does a great job of setting up the table and, f you know, parsing oh, out the breadcrumbs yeah. and creating the suspense. And I have a really good feeling about it. And I know one of the IMers wanted to know, do you think it'll get picked up for a web series or possibly even a TV series? And are you on board for it all the way? Yeah, I, you know, I really don't know what what will become of Ark. That's what's so funny is I know we shot ten episodes, and I don't know if it is going to be for the internet or television or movie. There's there's a lot of rumors and discussion out there about it, and all I know is that um, we uh, we made something that is is very entertaining and. We'll see. Let's just all hope that we get to see more of it. It's got a great sci-fi feel, so sci-fi fans look out for it, and uh, maybe we can get Trey to come in here when it's uh, set to be released. Uh, second part of Stutz's question, it was speculated on Talking Xena. Okay, I'm the one who speculated about it. <laughs> Not me, the, the I am. Oh. <laughs> um, that you were also interested um, in learning, in the learning experience of how a web series is produced. As you have previously, previously said that you were interested in producing for the new media of the internet. Was your involvement in this project your way of serving an apprenticeship in producing projects for the internet? You guys know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. Um, it's one of the reasons that I do go into different projects is because I want to learn. And I would, um, I definitely have something I would like to do for the internet. So whether or not ARC is the one or not, um, I'm just. I continue working on my own projects, and, and I wanted to see how this worked and how the structure works. So, so yeah. does that encourage you to continue to move forward and to oh, explore? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So Ripley Scott was the one who uh, asked that question about, you know, do you believe it'll be picked up for a wider audience? Thank you for that. Let's see what we have next. Ripley Scott, let's get back to that. Um, Ripley Scott wanted to give you just a quick thanks, if we can roll back to that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, because that was something deep and emotional that happened to show Renee before the show, and, and you wanted to acknowledge on the air. So going, Ripley Scott is going through this whole chemo cycle thing just now, and she just wanted to say to you that you have no idea how inspiring and uplifting it is to be able to watch 130 episodes of, of Xena, it can be, and it's distracting and enjoyable and motivating, and your work has really kept her going. So a big thankful thanks to all of your creative fans on YouTube as well. Oh, she's thanking them for putting yeah. all the you know, montages that they do on YouTube. Cool. So that was well from done. Ripley Scott who wanted to. Yeah, and again, you know, thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm, laughter is always a wonderful, uh, wonderful remedy, you know, moment to moment. So I'm glad that Zena is doing that for sure. Thank you, Ripley. Ripley Scott, what's your real name? Yeah, I, I, maybe so, well, maybe we can pull it up. I'm not sure if it's it's actually on there now, but maybe we can. Uh, we've alluded to it a couple times. I want to get back to it because um, it was one of my favorite parts of my first interview with you when you started talking about the heart, you know, with acting mm -hmm. and how you're right there and, and there's no filter. So I wanted to ask you as an actress, how do you get to that point? And then as a director, how do you help an actor that you're working with get to that filterless place to where they have instant access to all their emotions? Um, first, I guess I'll start with the directing. Um, hmm, I, I think on this short film, there are only a few times that it did happen where um, I thought maybe the actor was in his head. And um, so I, being on the other end of it sometimes, I would uh, just try to change my performance, keep them present, or um, between takes with both actors, I would just try to give them some visuals, maybe things to think about that would get them in their heart a little bit more, or maybe heighten the situation a little bit more. And that seemed to work. And, um, and I kept it really personal. I mean, it was, it was just about each actor and just talking to them individually and keeping it quiet because it was such an intense piece and I wanted them to hold their space. So that was, that was it. Other than that, I, I uh, was fortunate to have good actors that those tiny moments of, of thinking in their head were so, so infrequent that um, I think that's just good casting, right? Right, you know? that's a big part of it. 
But I, I think you hit on a key, though. It's, it's knowing your actors individually well enough to communicate to them in a way that they can process and understand what it is you're trying to get them to do, right? Right, and you just have to keep trying different things, right? Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's, that's, and, and with the children, it was probably more challenging because the whole thing was a make-believe game. You know, it was about the camera rolling and we took, took different pieces while they were going back and forth or, you know, sitting at a table or listening to something or coloring, you know, and just, again, try to think of the bigger picture, but, um, that was, they weren't actors and they probably won't be actors. Right. So it was different, so, you know, right. we'll never yeah. do it again. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, following up then on another one of those little coffee comments, um, uh, not, nothing to do about sexuality. <laughs> um, so so if, um, if directing is about control and acting is about surrender, how do you balance both when you're doing both? Uh, directing about control. See, I don't think directing is about control for me. Okay. I think um, directing for me was about containing the creativity. I almost, I almost felt like a ship and everybody was so good at what they were doing that all I had to do was keep making it more specific or lifting the bar a little bit more. Saying, oh, well, let's do it again. We can do better. Um, you know, and, and defeating any negativity. You know, at the, there was this scene in the river and it's one shot. The whole scene is one shot. So um, we had two hours before we were going to lose light. And when I explained what I wanted in this dolly shot, the uh, head grip said, well, it's going to take two hours to build it. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but you know, that was the shot. I knew in my heart that that was what I wanted. And so I threw out all the other shots and I said, well, let's start building. Let's do it. And then that was it. And I had to commit right then that this was going to work. This was going to be the one piece. And, um, you know, but that, uh, Were there that's any... containing, just containing the creativity and inspiring them. That's wonderful. And there are such things as directors who micromanage and are too controlling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I shudder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and um, unfortunately, these, uh, this great team, they're all so, so creative that I think that would be just a, a way of shutting them down. They're so good. Why would you ever do that? You, you would know lose I mean? something. Yeah. Were, were there any, speaking of losing though, and shots you had to give up, were there any shots that you that you really missed that you couldn't get, or was there anything that came up during the process that didn't turn out the way you wanted? Uh, okay, I can think of one shot that um, that you know it was down to the wire, and we had tried many many times, and the one I'll say technician that had it to facilitate the shot, well, it wasn't working for him, so I could tell that he, it was only going to get worse. You know what I mean? Right, you know, right, right, so you can't right, keep pushing it because right, it's not going to get right, any better. Right. So that's that sort of judgment call. And I thought, okay, now what can I do later on? And I thought of how I could make it work in the editing room. Right. So when this person said, you know, are you sure this is going to make the film? I could, in sincerity, say absolutely it would. Because if I didn't think it would, then we would have been there another hour and we would have waited, you know? Do you ever have that crew member or someone who's trying to set up a shot and the director and everyone else is over it, but oh. they're still trying to make it work? Oh, and they're it's like, the stop it, we're, we're moving on. Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> feeling because you can just feel them they're trying right. harder and harder and, and it's, the pressure's on and, and you have to know when to say, okay. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to take a, a quick moment to apologize to all of our Spanish-speaking people who are asking live questions. Uh, the operator does not speak Espanol, and I just spoke the only word of Espanol I think I know. So we, we do sincerely apologize for that, and hopefully you understand me. Um, <laughs> hello, though. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hola. 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 <laughs> Let's see. If uh, Wolf winged again, I think you want, just, we just wanted to get in the second part of his question. If you had the opportunity to work with a famous painter, who would you choose? <laughs> if I had to work with a famous painter? If you had an opportunity oh, to work to, with? Oh, to watch them? Um, to work with a famous painter? To apprentice under one? Work with? Watch? Uh, you know, I, I have no idea. I think any painter that right now would probably be um, pretty interesting and intriguing for me because I don't have any formal education on painting, you right. know? So that would be, uh, again, let's say Van Gogh and then right. in another world. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Uh, XWP1, my name is Urzabeth, I hope I'm getting that right, and I'm French. Your next movie, Bitch Slap, will be promoted. Did you organize any promotion in France, or can we hope to see you one day in our country for a convention or a promotion? Uh, big kiss, and all our wishes. Thank you for your answer. Bonjour, bonjour. So whether it be for Bitch Slap or anything, yeah. any opportunity for you to go, and, go to France? Coming up? Um, 
Um, I don't think it would be for bitch slap. Um, maybe if there's a festival where I could send words and spoken, then Absolutely. you can let me know because I'm not really. I think they have one in France. Uh, oh, Khan. the big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So if there, but you know, in uh, other little towns, yeah. let me know if there is something out there. Then. Um, can always send it over. I think, uh, I'll double check, hopefully I would hate to make this mistake on air, but I think Ken had a new uh, short film division or whatever. I'll double check and get that information to you if so. Okay. Because you should definitely apply. Thank you, yes. Uh, Glenn Lake Writer, we are all so proud to see you succeed with your projects through Rock Productions, but you clearly have other stories to tell as well. Over the years, um, you've shared your personal writing with the fans, including the monologue about letting go of Gabrielle and memoir about Miles' birth. Have you considered <laughs> writing a book? No, you know, I don't know that I have enough material yet to write the book, you know. But, and it could um, be hard to like improv, act, and write a book yeah, that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what was it like? You know? yeah, exactly. But um, I don't know, you know, um, memoirs, I don't know. Maybe when I'm 80 something and, you know, can't do too much, I don't know. Maybe I'll make it up. I don't know. Sure. We just, <laughs> sure. Uh, we were just talking Spanish and France, and Helen has wants to ask Have you ever thought of visiting Russia? I have not thought of visiting <laughs> Russia. <laughs> That's a great question, though, because um, you know my boyfriend, my partner Jed Sura is Russian, and um, that would be really interesting. Maybe one day we will get over there. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I want to ask you a filmmaking question. In fact, I want to ask you to fill in this sentence. Okay. <laughs> okay. Filmmaking at its best is collaborative, creative, and uncompromising. Great answer. Wonderful. Rock forever. What do you feel when you paint? Hey, we got a lot of painting fans out wow, there. Wow, I know. <laughs> what do I feel when I paint? You know, it usually begins with frustration of some sort. Um, you know, we all experience something like that in our lives. And um, it usually comes out with a lot of red or something, you know. And then, um, and then I'll go back and I'll actually create a plan, you know, <laughs> whether it be um, animals. You know, right now I'm, I'm painting something about Kilimanjaro because I climbed Kilimanjaro climbed years it? ago, yeah. and so um, I wanted to to do something sort of an homage to that. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, that yeah. must have been a pretty uh, steep climb, huh? It was a steep climb. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was funny. It took longer than I thought. Funny that. Did you think it was going to be easy? No, I'm just joking. Okay. No, but yeah. actually, you know, it's funny because it was my mother and I going up, and I think we took uh, four days or something, from what I can remember, going up to the very top. And these two, li I call them little girls, these two young ladies from Israel did it in two days. They zipped back past us, and they came right back down, and, and I, we just couldn't believe it because it was so trying, you know? Yeah, no. Back to uh, directing. Yeah. You said only a third time. How do you like it? Will we see you doing it again? Um, only of your projects, or, you, or will you be looking at submissions from other writers? Yeah, I would um, definitely love to, to direct other people's material. I think it, as much as I can practice, the better. But I have to, I have to resonate with the material. I was fortunate that someone did offer me something, but um, it was uh, just well, not the sort of story that I wanted to tell. So now it's about, sure, you know, trying to get out there and fine tune and figure out what kind of director I really am. Um, Any particular yeah. genre of material? I'm not into horror films as a oh, director. That's, that's what I realized right. after reading a couple, you know, um, even though I've enjoyed watching them and I've been in them, I don't want to direct them. It's funny. Now, yeah. someone asked a question because um, I think you're about people who appreciate your work have heard you say that before, whether it be as an actress, now as a writer, director, that you want to res resonate with the material, mm. right? So I think the question from the viewer, and we'll see if we can figure out who it was, is what is it that makes you resonate? Is it story? Is it the other actors? What is it that hits you? I don't know if it's so much about the other actors, because I think at the point where you're trying to add a director, I don't think the actors are typically involved, right. unless it's a huge name. But, um, is the story but even that? then, with Probably with their experience, you know, you should definitely do it, right? right, right. But, um, but um, with the material, it's just what can you enhance the story? That's what I would ask myself. Do I get the characters? Can I can I bring something to this? And that's what I would be asking myself as I read it. And I think since it's a recurring theme, let me guess, bitch slap me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, no, it's, it's, it's the oh. reverse. Yeah, <laughs> um, it would have to hit, hit your heart. Right? Yes. Because I hear yeah. you talk, use that term with acting and then mm -hmm. writing, so I'm assuming with directing that yeah. it's about if it hits your heart, then as an artist you can 
then I don't have to work hard. Mm -hmm. the, there's no extra energy in trying to figure out the material because I've already responded to it. Do you, do you feel in this piece, because it's the first one I think that you've written, that, you, that you've acted in, that, <laughs> yes. that the actor in you is almost cheating because by writing it, you're so locked in it. That's how I felt the first time I acted in something I wrote. I was like, wow, this is so much easier because the breakdown is, is already done for you. Right. Interesting. Interesting. It's funny. Um, well, I think the process of writing was similar in that way. You know, that I think I, I did have the backstory, and you're right, you know. I, would, I do this as an actor. I'm always asking the questions, and I want to know everything I can about the, the person. So, yeah, it was a cheat sheet. I, was like, I, was I like, had all my notes. Yeah, because you've already worked so hard on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, this is cool. I'm already locked and loaded. Uh, <laughs> Eli would like to ask, uh, sometimes life lessons are pretty harsh. What do you feel is the hardest lesson you've ever learned maybe a lesson that you wish you could pass on to your children mm. so they wouldn't have to learn the hard way? Mm. That's a difficult question, you know. A little deep for your film, you know, a little deep question for your film, not fair. Yeah, but. <laughs> you know, oh gosh. Right now, I would answer the hardest lesson is about trust for me. Trusting, um, and that's a lifelong lesson. How do, there's so many nuances about that that you could you know go into but um, that's what I find I'm the most at peace with that I questioned before and with my children my gosh that's a life journey everybody has to go through that there's a loss of love you know um, that that's part of it, their it, life it yeah. makes you who you are yeah right? if, you if, know, you, if you took away all the hard then you wouldn't get to be the person that you yeah. are that it made you you wouldn't be ready for certain life experiences right well, I, yes, and hopefully as a mother and a friend, I can be there for them and just, you know, be full of love for them because that's why I'm here for them, you know? That is. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and trust. I mean, it, it's so pertinent in everything we do in life. Life itself, acting, writing, right. it's, tr it's every, you're nothing without trust. It's funny because you're nothing without it, but yet, what does it really mean? You know what I mean? Oh, that's, wow, esoteric. Right. But, <laughs> see, there you go, Eli. Bring up the deep. That's right. And it's appropriate from an Eli character, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Quill would like to ask, do you have any new projects in mind? Um, I, you know, without going into any details, sure. um, I am basically trying to write this little comedy that I was telling you about earlier. The dark comedy? Yeah. The dark comedy. Yeah. <laughs> And um, playing with that, and then I'm also going back over this book called Leaning Towards Infinity, and I'm taking notes on um, for myself on what drew me to the material to begin with, and um, how I could tell a multi multi generational story again around women. Um, it's just notes. It's just very broad strokes on the beginning of that project. And it is in terms of writing, acting, directing, no preference. It's just a matter of what the material says to you and what inspires yeah. you in that particular project? I don't see myself acting in the Leaning Towards Infinity. Okay. I mean, um, I would love to direct it. So. And with ARC, we don't know when that's going to be released yet, correct? ARC? Not that I'm aware of. I don't know. Michelle, do you know anything? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows anything. No one knows anything. <laughs> Ask Trey. Trey might know. Trey might know. So Trey, if you're around and you're awake, let oh, us know. We're, we're starting to wind down here. <laughs> so let's give some shout outs to uh, Talking Xena. Talking Xena, thank you for participating in this interview and helping rev everyone up. Say hello to Talking Woo, Xena. Woo! Talking Xena! <laughs> and, uh, I do know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Xena Online community. We don't want to leave them out. Yes. The um, Australian community? Or which one? Uh, they're connected, I think, to Talk, Talk to Zena. Zena. That's yeah. right. They are. Um, and the, the Zena Online community is another. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Zena Online community. I need to know more about that. There How you do go. I not know that? And Let what, me know. And your websites for people to follow up. Uh, Arc the series, right? Is that the website for that? I believe so far, Arc the series Dot com? will probably be on Arc the series. Um, and then. Um, and then you have a production company website, right? What's that? Sure. Um, mine is rocpictures.com. Trying to you know, keep you guys updated on festivals for sure. Now you have a, a different website too, right? Uh, I the, have a... Uh, the fan club one? Yeah, yeah, I have one where I just tried to... Is that one being phased out into Rock Productions or is that still going to be around? No, it's still going to be around. Okay. It's really just to communicate with you guys on a different, in a different format, you know. So you don't want potential investors seeing the fan stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's actually, well, it's a part of who I am, yeah. Right. No, but it's, you know, it, it has stuff with the children and... Um, right, It's just, right. you know what I mean. It's, yeah, exactly. It's stuff that probably most people may not want to know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Link it's to fun. it, maybe. It's fun. You know, I guess if you really do, you can keep diving in and finding more 
about me if you wanted to, right? That's Absol what it's there for. So. Absolutely. Well, I want to uh, apologize to all those who we could not get to. As you guys know, we had an abundance of questions. Um, anything else you want to say to your fans? Anything else I left out? No, thank you guys for staying up and, and watching, and um, thanks for the great questions. Yeah, you guys did an outstanding job just like last time. We really appreciate you tuning in. This is our first night in our new studio. I'm so thrilled that it can be you. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Wow, it's uh, fun. Since uh, the end of our last interview, I've been looking forward to this one. So again, thanks so much for coming on. It's been thank great. Thank you. That's going to do it for this edition of Film Nut. Stick around. There's a post show. I'll talk to you guys on live, live in a little bit. And also, we might get Renee to do some more shout outs. And you know how much fun that was last year. <laughs> oh, so, no. so stick around. And again, thanks for tuning in.